Hey singers, I'm Justin Stoney, the founder of New York Vocal Coaching, welcoming you to episode 25 of Voice Lessons Online. This is the show where passionate voice teachers from all over the world help us learn from some of the greatest singers of all time. Our singer today has had countless words to describe him, but we'll stick with just two. The King. Legendary stuff. So let's learn from Elvis. First, Arbender Robinson is here to explore Elvis's significant influence on rock and roll. Hey there. So there is a, a tool that I use when I'm working with artists, uh, and it forces us to dig into vocal style in a completely different way. Go to the icon of that style and listen to an iconic song and see how many things they are doing that help us define the style in an iconic way. So the icon is Elvis. The iconic song is Blue Suede Shoes. Let's take a listen and then we'll talk about it. Well, there's a one for the money. Wonderful. Now, if you were to tell me all of the things that Elvis is doing in his iconic way to define this iconic style, what would you say? I would say the way that we use sharp, sharp rhythms followed by a legato phrase. Uh, 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 blue, blue, blue suede shoes. You can do anything, but lay off of my blue suede shoes, right? Or the way that we uh, articulate some of the words. Uh, no S on shoes. Blue, blue, blue suede shoes, right? Or the way that we're able to play with the melody. Blue, blue, blue suede shoes. Blue, blue, blue suede shoes, right? Those things allow us to really dive into that rock and roll style. The tempo, the energy, the, the way that the pace just keeps going from beginning to end of the song are all things that are iconic in this style. What other things can you find in this style from this icon? And as you're working on styles, different types of styles of other music, what things are you hearing in the style from those icons and how can you mimic them in your own work? Just something for you to think about going back to the icon to understand the iconic style. Rock and roll. Awesome, Arbender. And Abby Payne, tell us about how Elvis sang from the heart. Break Hotel. I think the reason why Elvis Presley is beloved by so many is his ability to express his feelings as he sings. Let's take a listen. Maybe I didn't love you Quite as often as I could have Little things I should have said and done I just never took the time You were always on my mind Here, 
very subtly for him. But we really believe that he believes what he's singing. And that makes it so interesting to watch and to listen to. Let's watch another really classic performance of Elvis's. one a little difficult to listen to because it's just so full of heartache. It's like he's channeling all his love and all his anguish into his voice, into the microphone. Let's watch just one more. I've lived a life that's full. I have traveled each and every byway and more, much more than this. I did it my way. As he closes his eyes here, it really seems like he's reliving memories from his own past and really thinking about that as he sings. So how can we channel Elvis without wearing a wig and aviators? Well, remember that adage that all good singers are also actors. If you believe what you're singing, the audience will believe it too. And that will make your performance all the more engaging. Choose songs that really resonate with you, that are really meaningful to you. Let your heart sing. Wonderful, Abby. Next, Zach Bradford just can't help falling in love with those vocal distortions. Elvis Presley's signature vocal growls and distortion were iconic elements of his singing style. Elvis would commonly use these sounds on lyrics, creating emphasis on key words. He would also use these vocal distortions before and after phrases as sort of a vocal punctuation to the emotion and the feeling of the song. Elvis's ability to smoothly transition between crooning and gravelly outbursts made him an influential figure in popular music and rock and roll. Check out these clips of the king of rock and roll in action. If you are wanting to incorporate vocal distortions into your singing like Elvis Presley, here are a few tips to get you started. 1. Vocal distortions should not hurt. They are not loud as the microphone should do most of the work. Number 2. You should be able to sing the song cleanly with ease before adding vocal distortions as an effect. Three, immerse yourself in the music and the vocal sounds you wish to create. This means a lot of active listening and an awareness that some of these vocal distortions may need to be adapted to suit your unique vocal instrument as well as your current stage of development. Number four, vocal distortions take time, so be patient and if possible, study with an expert. Also, here are some wonderful resources on vocal distortion from New York Vocal Coaching, so check those out. Well, singers, that is all for me this time. I look forward to seeing you again next time. So good, Zach. And Andy King, oh, this is so great. Tell us how Elvis is also the king of the low larynx. When we think of the larynx, style and pop music, you probably think about the larynx being neutral at the lowest and usually much higher than that. And if you're a regular person, you probably don't think about the larynx at all. But it's my and our job to think about it, so that's what we're going to do. Our larynx has the ability to move up and down. Among other things, this is a huge factor in vocal style. 
a lower larynx is usually associated with more classical singing, and a higher larynx is associated with more contemporary singing. What I absolutely love about Elvis is the fact that he often sings with a low larynx. One of the most iconic rock and roll singers tosses the high larynx to the side and does something all his own. Let's take a listen. As the snow flies On a cold and gray Chicago morning A poor little baby child is born in the ghetto In the ghetto And his mama cries Cause if there's one thing that she don't need Is another hungry mouth to feed in the ghetto there's so much depth, warmth, richness, and emotion in his voice. And that has a lot to do with that low larynx. Let's speak the lyrics with a low larynx so you can experience it yourself. Here we go. As the snow flies on a cold and gray Chicago morning, a poor little baby child is born in the ghetto. When we speak like that, it sounds kind of silly, but if you go back and listen, you'll hear some of those same colors and textures in his voice. What I love about Elvis's use of the low larynx, and what I want you to take from this, is that you have a choice to do with your voice what you want. Never let anyone tell you there's a right or wrong or a good or bad in how you use your voice to express yourself. Challenge yourself to bust out of the usual mold of shoulds and shouldn'ts, and instead bust out and start singing how and what you want. Thanks, Andy, and thanks to all our experts. I'm going to share what I've learned from Elvis in a moment, but first, here are some resources that can help you fall in love with your vocal journey. To get to know the Voice Lessons Online team or schedule a lesson, visit voicelessonsonline.com. To get your copy of Justin Stoney's book, Sing Like Never Before, visit singlikeneverbefore.com. If you'd like a vocal course that you can do from home, check out the Voice Lessons to the World vocal course. Our 12-part program takes you on a journey from beginner to master level vocal exercises. Find it at voicelessonstotheworld.com. If you're a voice teacher looking to master your craft, join our worldwide community at voiceteachertraining.com. Finally, if you'd like free vocal tips sent to you each day, sign up at dailyvocaltips.com. Now, I'm a great appreciator of Elvis. I have no question that he was an all-time great talent, performer, presence in our musical landscape, a musical king even. But I do share one question that many people have about Elvis Presley. Did Elvis invent rock and roll? The answer? No. Elvis was one of several artists in the 50s and 60s that contributed to what we'd eventually call rock. Some of those artists include Chuck Berry, Lieber and Stoller, Little Richard, Buddy Holly, Big Mama Thornton, Jerry Lee Lewis, Ray Charles, and of course, the Beatles. But the mistake we make with Elvis is to think that king means inventor. Elvis wasn't, in fact, an inventor at all, but he was definitely a king. And it's good to be king. But how did he become a king? And how can we learn from a king? I humbly submit three ways. Skill, passion, image. Elvis' success comes not from one of these elements, but from all three at the same time. Imagine if Elvis had just skill and passion. Mm, that's great and all. We would have had the smooth voice and the vibrant performer, but we'd be lacking that famous Elvis image. The swaying hips, the iconic guitar, the unpredictable persona. It would have been magic show. No magic. Aww. Next, let's imagine if Elvis had just the passion and the image. Now, that couldn't have worked. Elvis would have been a bad singer and a bad musician, and we know that's not true. That Elvis would have been all bark, no hound. Last, let's think of Elvis with just the skill and the image. This is actually reminds me of a lot of performers in today's industry. In this case, Elvis would have sang just great, and he would have tried so hard to fit into the current industry trends and the fads, but it would be void of that devotion to the craft. This Elvis would have been interesting, but empty. Thankfully, we never knew any of these Elvises. We had an Elvis with skill, 
He actually could sing. An Elvis with passion. He put his authentic self into everything he did. And an Elvis with image. He was able to listen to the trends and the audiences of his time and capture their attention. Now, that's not a trinity, no. Elvis was no god, that's for sure. But he did have skill, passion, and image. A royal trifecta. So maybe that can inspire you to ask yourself a few kingly questions. Am I devoted to improving my abilities? Am I pursuing my craft with pure love and joy? Is my image authentic to who I am and accessible to my audience? If you answered yes to all three of these questions, then I believe that you have learned the royal recipe from the king himself. We'll see you next time for more Voice Lessons Online. Mm -hmm.